Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and today, as promised, I was going to show you how to make a keyway in a pulley, or it could be a sprocket, or just any uh, item that's going to go in the shaft. So, uh, this has been machined out to uh, 5 8 diameter. It's made of aluminum, and we're going to broach that. Now, this is a complete set of brooches, or the larger sizes anyway. These kits come in different sizes, and you won't like the prices on them. They're very expensive. However, you can buy these components individually. And there's three different brooches in this particular one. This is a, a 3 16 wide, and then there's a, a, a quarter inch wide, and a, a 3 8 uh, wide. And all of these bushings here are used uh, different sizes uh, for different size uh, bores and uh, for different size brooches. So you can see that some are rather large. There's for a one and a half hole and it uses the big brooch. And uh, they make a very small set of these for models too, which I used to have and I don't know what happened to it. Now a brooch is slightly tapered. That is, each tooth uh, cuts just a little bit as it's uh, forced down through the work. And uh, we need to take two passes. After the first pass, we put a shim in there, and we take a second pass. Brooches are uh, precision, and they are expensive, and they are brittle, so you have to be careful the way you treat them. We, of course, are going to use a small arbor press to force this through. Some broaching machines in industry pull the brooch rather than push it, and there's far less chance of uh, uh, breaking them. Some brooches are very large. They might be uh, eight foot long and, uh, and a foot wide, and this is the way that the heads and the blocks of uh, engines are often uh, machined with broach, big broaching machines rather than uh, milling cutters. So brooches uh, are uh, quite a nice invention. Uh, there are also square brooches that you can force through a round hole and you end up with a square hole and hexagon and all the different shapes. But we're interested only in the keyway brooches today. So what we're going to do then is taking this uh, pulley here, we're going to put the brooch into the hole and then we're going to uh, press it in there, put a little lubricant on there with the arbor press. And we're going to do that twice. First without the shim and second with the shim. Okay, I'm out in my unheated garage now, so i got to work kind of fast. Uh, this is a, a Dake number zero arbor press. I had barely enough clearance here, so I had to take the platen out. Platen. And I've oriented the bushing here so that my Broach will uh, pass through the set screw. That way I'll have a set screw hole that's already there and usable. And make sure your broach is going to clear the uh, lower part of your arbor press. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there. Oop, a little more than I thought. And now we're simply going to uh, press it through there. And uh, I hope my arm isn't too much in the way as I do this. It's aluminum, so it isn't terribly hard cutting. And I don't have my armor press uh, bolted down, so I'm struggling with that just a little bit. Remember, each tooth is taking a little bit more out than the last one. I don't like this type of armor press. It doesn't have the ratcheting mechanism here because it's hard to get the, the force where you want it. And then be sure and catch your bro brooch as it comes out the bottom so it doesn't fall on the floor. Now that's the first pass. Raise that back up. And you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, chips. And there's chips on each tooth that shows you that each tooth is cutting. Now, for the second pass, we have to put that shim in there. And the shim goes like that. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to put just a little more oil. I'll put it there this time. Different than our first pass. This is a bit of a struggle because the press is not... mounted 
over to the table. And then get ready to catch that brooch. You could crack it if it fell on the floor. And out comes the brooch with the chips on it. And here's the finished product. Now I'll take that to the bench again back in the warmth and sanctity of my basement workshop and show you some close-ups of that. Okay, I must have polished the finished project or product and you can see, I hope this shows up. There's the keyway and uh, I'll put a couple of uh, stills at the end of this uh, and uh, the key fits in there quite nicely and uh, so this project is done. So now you have seen me put in keyway in a pulley. This is part of an engine by the way and you've seen me make two different uh, types of key seats on the milling machine. So hope that was helpful to you because this is a project that uh, repair projects that we run into so often in a machine shop. This is Tubal Kane signing out saying so long for now.